A brand new season full of brand new changes, and we're still asking the same old questions. Duo Q for high ELO players, because where would Riot be without its questionable choices for matchmaking? Do you remember, you remember Dynamic Q? Because I do. I remember it. I fucking remember. Design director Riot XR announced in a Riot post that they will be lifting duo restrictions for players ranked Masters and above. So let's take you on a little timeline over the journey of how we got here. Today as it stands, Masters is on average about 0.22% of the player base. Now, that's going to go up to about 0.5% based on historical data. Back in 2017, Dynamic Q was removed to reintroduce Solo and Duo Q as well as the brand new Flex Q. However, challengers were no longer allowed to duo. Now keep in mind, there were no grandmasters back then. So as expected, challenger players got upset. And to be fair, they had the right to. Master players could still duo, but they would still get matched up against challenger players who couldn't. So in 2018, patch 8.1, that's season eight, Riot would bring back duo Q, stating this in the patch notes we saw that challenger players were facing master tier duos pretty regularly, which ends up making the queue less competitive overall, despite the original intention back in 2016, and also punishes duos on the upper echelons of master for winning too hard. We'll be monitoring how much this impacts the health of the queue over the coming weeks. It wasn't until 2021, about three years later, that they would remove duo Q altogether. There's a bit of text here, but let me summarize essentially the three key points they made. One, we want the apex tiers to reflect the best individuals on the server. Two, duo Qs make it difficult to provide fair matches due to player count at that skill level. Three, we hope to see more participation in flex Q and clash to satisfy the need to play with friends. And surprise, surprise, players complain. We have here Karzi of Team Vitality saying, also, please bring back Duo Q. Here's Vander, current head coach of FUT Esports, saying, please bring back Duo Q, I'm losing my mind. And here's Santorin, former jungler of Team Dignitas, saying something a little more constructive. He says, please bring back Duo Q for high ELO. The biggest issue with Duo Q was players playing for rank one while duoing with zero LP master accounts. So just make some restrictions. One way could be only letting people duo who are in a 500 LP range of each other. We want duo. We want solo. We just want fucking voice chat. For the love of God, can I just stop getting autofill top lane? So it wasn't until an interview with Riot I'm Walrus, the ranked system designer at the time, till we got a bit more data and information about the topic. It was stated in the interview that they were aware of the popularity of people duoing, but at lower ranks, all they had to do was take that duo and match it against a slightly harder set of opponents, which is possible at lower ranks, but once you hit masters, that solution just falls apart. There's just not enough players on the server. That impacted queue times negatively, and that impacted balancing negatively. And here's the kicker. Here's the most important thing to take away. They said that upon looking at the data more closely, duo queue resulted in a clear and sizable competitive advantage. They also made it clear. We don't want duoing to become mandatory for players who wish to succeed in solo slash duo queue's highest ranks. So we felt we had to remove it for the betterment of the entire ranked ecosystem. And this seems pretty cut and dry. What's there left to discuss here? We looked at the numbers. The numbers say there aren't enough players. Duos drive up the queue time. They lead to game imbalance. And I'm sure it's even worse on smaller servers. That's just, that's just the end of discussion, right? Like, like, like what's, wh where do we go from here? Well, three years later, today, Riot have announced that they're now looking at lifting duo queue restrictions yet again. We've come full circle. We went from having dynamic queue to having solo queue back, but challengers can't duo, to challengers can duo now, to no one can duo, to now we can duo again. So what's happening? How, how are we possibly still talking about this? We did the stats, we ran the numbers. You can't sustain it. It's, un it's unsustainable. So obviously, it's a lot to unpack here. I mean, where, where do we even start? How do we even begin to approach this? There's so many things to talk about. I think we should start at the why, but not why we should do it, rather why Riot wants to do it. Because historically speaking, that matters more than anything. And the reason is pretty easy to extrapolate. If we take a look at Riot XR's post, we can see that it was actually in response to a question 
another Redditor had by the name of Golden Fruit. Golden Fruit asked, from things such as ranked placements to toxicity to competitive integrity, Smurf accounts affect a lot of stuff. What's your opinion on the topic of Smurfs, and have you as a team considered the Dota 2 option of banning them? To which Ixar replies, and begins to state a few points, such as better initial placements for first-time ranked players, better Smurf detection systems, and closely monitoring ranked play. Then, this guy, why is this a foot? Like, why is this a... Do you see how this is like a sub point? Why is it? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting mad. It's a t in, in a tiny little footnote, this little throwaway, they put in duo queue and high tier play. Considering opening up duo queue for master's tier, in addition to diamond and below. Consulting with different regions who tend to have different opinions on this topic, we're open to different regions having different rules if necessary. Dude. This is like a massive thing. Like, how are we not treating it? Like this guy did not just come in and drop a bomb. <laughs> this can't be some throwaway small thing to tackle smurfing, can it? Well, maybe it is a big thing. Maybe it is a big thing to deal with smurfing. And he's just put it in there as a side note because it's just such a controversial topic. So, so here's my takeaway from all this. Although imposing dual queue restrictions for Apex tiers led to better queue times and more balanced games, it's also led to the sort of influx of pros and high elo players willing to smurf so that they can maybe play with their viewers, maybe they want to boost, or maybe they just want to have fun. And that, as a result, is contributing to the smurfing problem. And maybe, maybe Riot Games is sort of looking at this as, we understand we're shafting competitive integrity. Maybe it benefits the majority player base. Yes, yes. This would not be the only positive, okay? I, I know you're dying to tell me, but let's go over a bit more of the history before we dive into that, because the history is rich. It is so, so ludicrously rich. I have been here playing High Elo Lee Sin since like, season two, man. I'll be at a coffee shop downtown and I'll get like withdrawals. I'll start shaking. I'll be like, holy shit. I have, an, <laughs> I have an insect vein into my team in like three hours. I've seen the good and the bad. And let me tell you, the ugly is rough. And you guys know this. I literally would not shut up about this for the longest time. Matchmaking has been an ongoing issue for Riot and they genuinely care. They have objectively been very, very active in doing something about it. They've tried to create a system where everyone's happy. In fact, it literally all started with D-Day, Dynamic Q, which in theory, I can see where they were coming from. I mean, if Dynamic Q worked, it would have been beautiful. This unrestricted Q, no one had to pick between Qs, the games were matched, you played with your friends, toxicity would go down. You just pump out some league with the homies. But we all know how that ended with this weird ass round table intervention thing. You think I forgot? Huh? You think I forgot as, Ry as Skara sat down with three riders who made the system and just berated them for, for 25 minutes straight? They didn't get a word in. He just called their system shit. What your guys' experiences have been playing uh, Dynamic Q, I know that- It's awful. <laughs> like, yeah, so let's I, I mean, I'm serious, am I- am I This man, who was so passionately anti-Dynamic Q, who was screaming from the heavens above, Twitter, Reddit, YouTube, you name it. He was there left and right, begging the gods above, any spirit or deity that would listen, to just bring back solo Q. Not- Duo Q, remove it, but pure solo Q. He wanted that competitive juice pumped straight into his veins. And you know what happened? You know what happened eight months ago? He caved. <laughs> he caved. This man broke. He, he walked back every word he ever said. Look, watch. I had to be brought on to have an intervention with a couple other people and had to sit down with Riot. They filmed it and we talked about, I was the one who said, bring back solo Q, just solo. You guys are fucking stupid. Now, listen to me again. <laughs> I fucked in A, man. That was my fat, my bad, dude. I apologize. <laughs> I I made a mistake. I apologize. Case solved, boys. It's all Scar's fault. More on him wanting duo back later. So it should come as no surprise that every rider in this video no longer works at Riot. With new strategy came a new set of eyes, and for a while, that was a man known as Greg Street, better known as Ghostcrawler. He came around and introduced FlexQ, which allowed players to go beyond duoing, allowing a full party to team up. That's when I Am Walrus joins the team. The first project he got to work on was making Clash, 
And although Clash didn't go off without a hitch, and to this day, it's still Crash and not Clash, it was a response to the situation. It was helping players scratch that desire to play with their friends competitively. It offered new players a way to satisfy that itch. And if we're talking just Apex tiers, Riot came out of left field with Champions Q, which invited a selected elite to scrim it out. It is clear, without a shadow of a doubt, that Riot's been trying. They are constantly innovating new ways for us to scratch that itch without shafting competitive integrity. And here's something you might have missed. There was a period of time where Riot was discussing removing duo queue altogether, not just for masters, but for every player, globally removing duo queue, a complete redefinition of the ladder, making it pure solo queue. This was in spring of 2022, quite recently, a year after the removal of duo. And they were pretty blatant about why they wanted to do it. They said, we're investigating a solo only mode in order to match player intent and provide the healthiest competitive individual queue possible. On paper, the system health and quality indicators look really good. For example, in solo only queue, we would expect an even further decrease in autofill and secondary rates. Queue times could decrease by up to 5% for almost 100% of players. Win rate advantages due to team disparities would vanish completely. Boosting would be eradicated. We would expect between team and within team MMR for 99% of players to be within one division's rank of each other during peak hours. In addition, we would like to see the following for a ranked flex queue, an increase in queue population, drastic improvements in match quality, significant decrease in queue times. This means reinvesting in ranked flex queue integrity with our anti-cheat team and finding a natural way for solo players to connect with ranked flex slash crash. And this obviously brings us to the reason why this never went through. Riot were hoping that flex queue would become the replacement for Duo. It seems like they were planning on falling back on the idea that Flex Q would become successful over time, which we unfortunately know that no one really looks at Flex Q as a serious ladder. We, we, can, we can touch upon this for a sec, but it's really a discussion for another day. There's a lot of ways to approach making Flex better, but specifically this, this is about moving Duos out of Solo. And frankly, that's a cultural issue. It's a cultural issue stemming from the fact that people don't look at flex queue as a competitive alternative. And if you wanted people to take it seriously, man, that'd be a lot. That'd be a lot of work. Let's deal with what we have now, okay? Because flex is not going to become a solution to this anytime soon. So this, this is our timeline. This is historically speaking what we have to work with. And if you ask me. <laughs> I think it's ridiculous that we're even having this discussion. To go from considering walking back Duo for everyone to walking it back in for Masters Plus, I mean, it's just not rational. And that's exactly it. This isn't rational. And that's fine. There's no good argument for bringing Duo Q back. They've literally done the math. There's no good argument for it from a healthy game perspective. But boy, oh boy. Is there an emotional one? Earlier this week, I made a Reddit post about this exact topic so that I could gauge some people's opinions before making this video. And this is a complex issue with no good solution. So, so you know that comment section is gonna be juicy. Imagine banning playing with a friend. <laughs> I'm willing to face duos again in Masters Plus if I was able to ping my teammates again and maybe chat 10 times or more a game without getting chat restricted. Holy, can we just add voice chat already? Like what the fuck, lol? I don't give a shit if it's theoretically less competitive. The game is about fun. We heard voices from both sides of the argument and from each side of the ranked poll. High elo players who want a duo want duo and high elo players who don't would rather more balanced games and shorter queue times it's just that simple then there's players who aren't even affected by this those players who are lower than masters have an opinion on this and they would prefer duo for an interesting reason they want more content. <laughs> they want to see their favorite streamers team up and have fun because it means more enjoyment as a viewer. Then there's some people who would prefer not taking the ladder so seriously and treating it less competitively and more like a game. You know, having fun like we're meant to. Maybe toxicity will go down. Maybe it'll go up. Who knows? So I want you to think. 
before I give my opinion on this, I really want you to think about this. Now, knowing my viewers, all of you guys are challenger. So this affects like 99% of you. But for the 0.1% that it doesn't, I also want to know why you guys have the opinion that you do. You are probably justified in your opinion. I mean, other games have more flexible queue styles. Why can't League? Well, other games also have voice chat, but let's not, let's not get into that, please. Speaking on that, maybe you fall somewhere in the middle. Maybe your point is enable duos, but allow voice chat so that at least it's an even playing field. Maybe it's duo with restrictions, like that 500 LP thing Santorin was talking about. So keep that thought and hold on for just a second, okay? I'm happy to share that I've been given permission to share just a few points of Riot's stance on the subject. So here they are, straight from Riot's mouth. On the topic of voice chat, and I'm touching on this first because I know you guys are so vocal about this for, for the people who do want voice chat. I personally asked Riot why there wasn't voice chat. And I phrased my question in a certain way. Now, preface, that was years ago. And I've since changed my stance on it. Okay, I am anti-voice chat. Why? Doesn't matter. The way I phrased my argument at the time in favor for voice chat was if the problem is toxicity, then people are going to figure out a way to be toxic to you anyways, with or without voice chat. We might as well have voice chat so that people have more competitive games. So they responded by telling me this. First, internally, Riot are split on the idea of voice chat. Half the company wants it, half don't maybe some don't care. Second, there's absolutely a difference between people being toxic on voice and people being toxic in chat. Third, they had just recently introduced voice chat for pre-maids and they believed that that was good enough. That's a fine fix. Voice is there for parties who queue up, which is, that's fair. And and that's that's where I'm going to leave it at. Okay, so just, sorry, I'm not, I'm not going to get into it. Voice chat isn't coming anytime soon. Now back to Duo Q. So on the topic of flex Q being a replacement, I'm Walrus says this, most players who duo don't exclusively duo. So flex doesn't work as a full replacement since the progression is a separate ladder. On the topic of removing duo to improve Q times, pulling people out of population almost 100% of the time makes Q time take longer. I imagine he's trying to say that some players who aren't able to duo may just stop playing the game altogether. On the topic of duo parity, which is when one team has a duo, the system will match them against another duo. He says that duo parity at high MMR is not 100%. If we made it so that it was impossible to get an uneven duo matchup, Q times would explode. However, we more often than not get even duo matchups, even at high MMR. So he's saying that even though duo parity isn't 100% for high ELO, it is still most of the games at high ELO. Oberon also states we can't make good quality matches at high levels for duoing. The play with friends problem, however, doesn't need to be solved through ranked solo slash duo. In my opinion, flex slash clash needs a rework and there's stuff we're thinking about to improve normals. This might have been quick play, I'm guessing. So. You're fully clued in. You have the entire timeline of everything that the company's ever done, and you have almost all their opinions and data on the subject. What do you do? You know, I think Riot's had to make compromises in the past. This is truly a complex situation with no good solution. You wanna know something else that is a truly complex situation with no good solution? Dodging. Dodging has been a problem forever. There is no good solution. If you make dodging penalty free, then a game will literally never start. And if you make greater penalties, then every game will go through and people will just AFK and int instead. Toxicity would go way up. That, that minus 5, 15 LP, you get dodging once or twice, that 5, 25 minute queue timer, that's compromising. It's a shit solution but it's the only one we have. Duo Q and high ELO feels just like that. It's just a compromise. So let's talk about why you guys would like to see Duo and high ELO. I wanna see more fun league content. Okay, okay, <laughs> at least you're honest. Honestly, I don't even know how to comment on this one. <laughs> it's, just, it's just such a funny answer. People who want a duo enjoy duoing. They wanna play with their friends. Scaro, may, may, maybe that's just their way of playing the game. If they feel like they can play the game more meaningfully in a way that's special to them, their happiness goes up, their passion goes up, their drive goes up, their content goes up, viewers are happy. And 
looking at it now, this is probably the best argument you can make. It's honest. It's an emotional argument. So let's treat it as one. I just think it's funny that the same people who were asking for solo queue to come back are now asking for duo queue to come back. I think it's a bit of, you don't know how good you had it till it's gone type of situation. Who knows? Maybe you'll beg for it to be gone when it comes back. Next argument. It's a game. Don't take it so seriously. Let's have fun. Fun should be Riot's priority. Yeah, you can play norms, but who the hell takes norms seriously, bro? I gotta, I gotta pump out ranks still, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not gonna get decent practice in a normal game. Bro. <laughs> bro, it's ranked. <laughs> where, where else? Does it get competitive pro play? This is such a weak argument. If you want to treat ranked like a four fun thing, go ahead. Literally, no one is stopping you in the current system. That's why ranked exists, so that I can stop getting matched with you at a certain elo. At the end of the day, the sides are easy. People who want a duo are going to advocate for duoing. People who don't want a duo would prefer having shorter queue times and more fair matchmaking. And I think most of you know where I sit on this. I am not an advocate for duo, but I personally never duo. <laughs> so, so that's just the side I fall into. All the data is telling me that it's better to not have duoing. But if we're gonna have this discussion, then we have to discuss it. There's gotta be some validity to the other side. In, in a perfect world, flex Q and clash satisfy that itch. There's a beautiful world where people can go in, have fair games, and the latter is just as competitive and the progression somehow carries over you can grow your solo rank to your flex rank and like the ranks join together and it's sort of like fun and sexy but but unfortunately they don't we don't we don't live in that world and i don't know if we ever get to so if you wanted to add duo back in my opinion it's got to be with some restrictions you can't have rank one and rank two playing together the ladder at the top is designed to be competitive by nature it is designed for people who are high elo today. There is a different decay system for people who are masters plus. It's a 10 day system that if you don't average at least one game of league a day, you get kicked out right down to diamond, basically regardless of how much LP you are. You could be a thousand LP challenger and if you, you ain't playing five days in a row, you're down a diamond, you get kicked out. The latter is for people who are, who are high rank now. Today, if you're rank 50, you're rank 50. It wasn't based on a champion being busted last patch that you just abused. You're challenger right now. I think the argument of people being within 400, 500 LP of each other, the duo, that's not going to fly. It's still going to let rank one and rank two duo or, you know, slightly lower than that. It's just, it's just going to ruin game. There's, there's, there's got to be another contingency. Masters Plus is divided into three ranks. You got Challenger, Grandmaster, and Masters. And the tidiest solution is going to be disallowing duos for anyone higher than Masters. It's just the tidiest solution. If you're Grandmaster or Challenger, bro, you're competitive. You're hyper competitive. That's just the name of the game. You're the Elite Four. You're about to challenge some kid to a Pokemon battle. And if he wins, you give him a shiny bad. Is, is that system perfect? No. But is any of it? No. <laughs> That's this whole discussion, that it's not a perfect system. You're still going to get duos facing into players who literally can't duo. And that's just a compromise, my dude. Games are going to be imbalanced. You're going to have longer queue times, but that's just the name of the game. You want duo back? You make a compromise. I was also thinking we could maybe introduce duo, but just for bot lane, but like with also parity and all the restrictions I just mentioned so that you know, if you're an ADC and a support and you queue together, you can only get matched against people who also duo. And obviously that system's not perfect, you know. It favors only those two people, but God, the major thing you hear from those guys is how shitty it is to just play that, that role solo. And may maybe you could do the same for jungle mid, but with parity and, and just masters, I don't know. I think there's a few ways to come up with a solution, but man, you're not going to please everyone. And you're absolutely going to shaft competitiveness. But hey, at least smurfing's dipped. And people can duo. And people won't be making as many new accounts. It, look, if you've been here this long, I am dying to hear from you. You have all the information you need to make an informed decision about this.
whatever your rank is, whatever your preferred stance is, whether you play with duos or not, or sometimes, I want to know what you think. Does this affect you? And what is your opinion about this? Thank you so much for watching. I love you all. See you next time.